one accomplice of the militants stood trial after the initial investigation. Shin, 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 shin. The government covered up as many of the details of the whole affair as they could. Overall, 129 of the hostages died as a result of the raid on the Dubrovka Theater, including 18 members of the show's cast and crew. A 13-year-old and a 14-year-old from Nord Ost were among the casualties. Dmitry Milovidov lost his teenage daughter, and numerous other families lost loved ones. Russian authorities, including Putin, stated that the gas could not have caused the deaths, but they never revealed exactly what had been released into the theater. They blamed the loss of life rather on stress, lack of fresh air, lack of food and water, and other illnesses. Officials called the raid a success and praised themselves and the officers involved. Vladimir Kronoshev, the coordinator of the raid, received the title of Hero of Russia from Putin. No investigation was launched by Russia, who claimed that the gas had to be released in secret in order to not tip off the militants. After the gas rendered the militants unconscious, special forces raided the theater and shot them dead. As aerosol spray was sent through the ventilation system of the theater, the authorities readied themselves to enter. After the militants and hostages were asleep, Russian forces entered the theater through the roof and the sewer wearing gas masks as protection from the fumes. They overtook the building with relative ease, encountering sleeping hostages and rebels. The only shots fired went into the militants, who were presumably shot while unconscious. However, by the time police started carrying out hostages, many had stopped breathing. The few medics on the scene were not aware of the gas and had no idea what they were dealing with. Some hostages were already dead in their seats in the theater, others vomited as they were carried out. They gasped for air but did not receive medical attention, and with the unknown toxin in their bodies, there was little that could be done. Most hostages were thrown into buses to remove them from the scene before television cameras could get a glimpse. After two hostages were killed, the Russian government decided to end the standoff with deadly gas. On the early morning of October 26, Russian authorities launched an unannounced surprise raid on the theater. By then, at least two hostages had been killed, one while trying to escape. In order to keep the counter-attack secret, no medical or public health resources were contacted before the government began pumping gas, intended to knock the militants unconscious into the theater at 5 m. Speculation exists as to the kind of gas that was used. It may have been fentanyl and opioid that can be hundreds of times more potent than morphine. Fentanyl can cause a deadly overdose. Symptoms can be reversed with medical intervention. During the siege, hostages used the orchestra pit as a toilet while rows of seats rattled as hostages. During the siege, hostages used the orchestra pit as a toilet while rows of seats rattled as hostages shook with fear. The separatists were heavily armed and willing to die for their cause. Forty, fifty separatists, including members of the Black Widows, took over the theater during Act Roman II. 40-50 separatists, including members of the Black Widows, took over the theater during Act Roman II. Lord Ost is a play set in Stalinist Russia meant to celebrate Russian achievements. Its director was taken hostage that night. The second Russia Chechen War ended on paper in 2009. 
it's really still being taught. Context, Chechnya has been fighting with Russia for centuries. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below and also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then take care, bye!